Locked and loaded. Let's tear it up. Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and today we're doing another install guide. Today is going to be the Navi controllers. Now, I for one has been really excited for these to come out, and I can't wait to get playing with these. So if you have been keeping up with the PS Move service, you'd know that now in version 7, PS Navigation Controller support has now been added. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get this thing installed, but I do have a few things to tell you first. So I guess first of all, make sure that you have version 7 of the PS Move service installed. And secondly, I have two disclaimers that I need to share with you. First, you're going to need a second Bluetooth adapter to get this done. Now there's no exception to this unless you want to keep the navigation controller wired by USB the whole time. Secondly, doing this install is really easy and requires a few very specific steps. And if you don't follow those steps just right, you might end up making a mess out of your current install. So just make sure you follow this guide step by step and you won't run into a single problem. Now take it from me, I tried to jump ahead before and I ran into a heck of a mess I had to clean up. So now that we got the disclaimers out of the way, the first thing you're going to need to do is unplug that Bluetooth adapter from your computer. That's right, that's the one that actually had your PS Move controllers attached to. And now you're going to want to plug in that second Bluetooth controller so you only have that new one plugged into your machine right now. So all you got to do now is go and download the SCP Toolkit and also USB DView from the description below. Now that you got those, let's head over to the install right now. To start things off, open up USB DView and Device Manager. You should see that you have just one Bluetooth adapter showing in Device Manager, which is your new one since your original one for the PS Move controllers is now unplugged. Then find that Bluetooth adapter in USB DView. It'll show as generic Bluetooth radio. You should make sure you select the one that is in green since it's the one that's currently connected. Highlight it, then scroll up and grab a quick snapshot of it like this. Now you can just move that off to the side. At this point, you can plug both Navi controllers in by USB into the computer. Now the lights on the controller should start to blink slowly, showing that they are charging. Now you can close USB DView and then install the SCP Toolkit installer. Make sure you double check that you're running version 1.6. 1.7 and above are not working well with the Navi controllers. Once an initial part's done, click on the big green arrow to install the drivers. First, make sure you uncheck the DS4 checkbox and leave the Bluetooth driver and DS3 driver checkboxes checked. Now select the Bluetooth dongle drop down and find your Bluetooth adapter. Remember, this is your second Bluetooth adapter and you shouldn't see your first because it's unplugged. Double check that against the snapshot that you took earlier and make sure the VID and PID matches up. Now you'll need to find your navigation controllers in the DS3 drop-down list. Check them both, make sure they're both named Navigation Controller. Now click on the install button and don't be alarmed when you see a ton of notifications pop up on the right hand side of your screen. This means good things are happening. Now that the drivers are installed, you'll want to find the SCP Toolkit Monitor. It'll probably be in your system tray, and then just left click on it in there. A small status window will open and show you both controllers are plugged in by USB and they're charging. Now you can unplug the controllers. If they don't automatically connect, you'll just press on the PS button to get them to connect. Once connected, it'll no longer say USB, it'll now say Bluetooth connected. So now that we have them paired, let's make sure all the buttons work correctly. So go back into the system tray and right click on the grey SCP Toolkit icon and select Input Tester. In here, you'll want to select each controller from the drop down at the bottom left and then test all the buttons to make sure the correct spots are lighting up. If both check out fine, make sure you shut down the Input Tester before continuing. Now let's head over to the App Data folder to find the PS Move service in there and open up Controller Manager Config. All you need to do in here is change Gamepad API Enabled to True, then Save and Close. So now we need to start configuring the controllers to work with the PS Move service. You can now plug the original Bluetooth adapter back into your machine and then turn on the two or three Move controllers. Now we can open the PS Move service. 
Once it starts up, feel free to scroll up and double check that both Navi controllers are listed in the status window like this. Now open up the config tool and go to controller settings. Take note of the two controllers you intend to pair up with the Navi controllers. You'll need to look for device serial. Now I just look at the last part of the device serial and then match them up. Matching it up is mostly important when you have three controllers. It's just to make sure you don't match up a Navi controller with your head track controller. So now that we have both controllers paired up, you can close the config and the last thing we need to do is map the buttons in the Steam config file. So let's head back to the Steam config folder and open up our steamvr.vr settings file. And we'll need to add in this extra bit to tell Steam what those new buttons on the Navi controller mean. Now I have left a full copy of my Steam VR settings file in the description below if you just want to copy that. But feel free to modify it to whatever buttons you feel would work best for you. Once you hit save and close, we're all done! And don't forget to run your batch file to reinstall the Steam VR drivers. Now every time you reboot your computer or start things up, the Navi controllers will always connect right away without having to worry about anything. Another nice feature is that the controllers will automatically shut off if not used for a while to help conserve battery life. So now that everything's installed and ready to go, let's get our clips on and get ready to play. Now if you are wondering how I made these gorgeous looking clips, check the top right of your screen and I got a link to those there. I'll show you how to make your own pair for virtually nothing. Locked and loaded. Let's tear it up.